When I was young, my mother used to tell me a story about a rabbi who had a dream. In the dream, he got the chance to see where the selfish and the givers end up. First, he saw where the selfish people were taken. He couldn't believe his eyes. It was a big, beautiful banquet hall where the tables were lavishly decorated and the food was piled high. Upon closer inspection, he noticed no one was eating. He wondered why until he realized that a three foot long spoon was strapped to each of their arms. Without the ability to bend their elbows, they could not eat. So each one sat hungry at a table filled with food. The rabbi was then led out of this room to the place where givers go. He couldn't understand what he was seeing. It was also a beautiful banquet hall lavishly decorated with food piled high. Just as in the other hall, a three foot spoon was strapped to each person's arm. But there was a difference. Here, the people sitting at the tables looked happy. He saw that in this room, each arm stretched out to reach the mouth of another. Here, no one went hungry because everyone could eat. My mother told me givers get used to giving, but selfish people only understand taking, no matter where they live or how much they have. She said learning this lesson would serve me well in my service to God. I grew up in Nazareth where the houses are built on the steep sides of a hill. The location allows them to receive morning sunlight. The soil is good and the rainfall is generous, so we are never without food. The weather is usually kind because of the hill's protection. However, with only one spring of water for the entire village, the town does not grow much. This suited me fine. Growing up, I felt safe and secure. My husband, Joseph, also grew up in Nazareth. He does not talk much, but his mind is always working. He's conscientious, faithful, and gentle. Joseph works as a carpenter. He is a thinker, and I am a planner, so we are a good match. And in case you're wondering, Joseph is a giver. I know this because in the sixth month of our betrothal, something happened that changed our lives. Joseph was by my side every step of the way. It was spring, a time when most of the rains had passed and the ground was green. It had been a busy day and I was hunting for some privacy in the cooler evening air. <sighs> I thought I heard the rumble of thunder, but the sky was clear. I was preoccupied looking for storm clouds when a voice broke the silence. Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. I turned around to see who had called to me. No one was there, but I noticed that the light around me seemed to be shining brighter. The sun had already set, so it should have been darker. I was confused. I closed my eyes and stumbled back a step. The voice came again. Don't be afraid, Mary. I opened my eyes. No one was there, but the light seemed even brighter. I took a small step forward, looking into the light in front of me. <sighs> Slowly, the light shifted, and a figure began to form, growing in size, as if walking toward me from a long distance. When the figure reached me, I felt dwarfed by its presence. When I finally gained enough courage to look up, I found an attentive face looking at me. In the same voice I had heard before, the figure said, Mary. Then, unbelievably, an even stranger thing happened. From some place deep inside me, I understood that this illuminated figure was an angel. The angel said, do not be afraid. And I suddenly realized I no longer was. The angel told me I had found favor with God. I had been chosen to conceive and bear a son. The angel said, you shall call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. God will give to him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. 
I could feel my face growing warm and the blood pounding in my ears, but I did my best not to let the chaotic feelings rolling inside me sway me from my spot. I don't think this is possible. I am a virgin. I'm engaged, but I'm not yet married. The angel said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. The child to be born will be called holy, for he will be the son of God. Go and visit your kinswoman Elizabeth. She is old and has been called barren, yet she has conceived a son and is now in her sixth month. See for yourself that nothing is impossible with God. I bowed my head and searching for how to respond. And that's when it happened, the revelation. In that moment, I discovered I am also a giver. I whispered, I am the Lord's servant. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel was gone, only a cloud blowing over the plains. I have been on a road of revelation ever since. I've discovered things about myself I never do. I remain watchful for what is yet to be revealed. What about you?